What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with some with another one. So we have some interesting news that has broken, and that undefeated three division world champion, former junior welterweight, undisputed world champion, currently the reigning undisputed welterweight world champion, who is widely considered and acknowledged as the number one best pound for pound fight in the world, and Terrence Bud Crawford was 40 wins, no loss, no draw, 31 wins by way of knockout. Once this rematch with this man right here, former unified three belt WBA, WBC, IBF, welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, Earl the True Spence Jr., who has 28 wins, one loss, no draw, 22 big wins by way of knockout, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach at 33 years of age. He wants the rematch. This is the first fight. This is the first weigh in. And the fight was July 29th, Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena. Terrence Crawford is now on the verge of being 36 years of age at 5'8 with a 74-inch arm each. And Errol Spence and this fight didn't play out how Errol Spence wanted this fight to play out. Not in his wildest imaginations did he think that the fight was going to play out the way it played out. Seeing Errol Spence uh, get dropped in the second round dropped twice in the seventh round, and then stopped in the ninth round. And all the rounds in between that, Errol Spence was dominated. He won the first round and the first half of the third round, but he lost all the other rounds, and he got dominated in the second half of the third round, and he got stopped in the fight. This was on paper a 50-50 fight if there ever were one. This was at 147, and this was for Undisputed, the welterweight division. Both guys was looking to create history. For Terrence Crawford, he wanted to become the first male to become undisputed and hold all four major sanction belts in two separate weight classes. And for Errol Spence, he was looking to become undisputed for the first time in his career and become the first undisputed welterweight four major sanction belt world champion. It didn't play out well for Errol Spence. It played out well for Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence stated that he stayed his welcome over, uh, you know, stayed his welcome at the 147 pound division after the fight. He wanted the immediate rematch to take place at junior middleweight, 154, as uh, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford in their contract leading into this fight. The winner of this fight was able to choose the weight that the rematch was at, and they would get a bigger share of the split, okay? Uh, and the loser had the opportunity to activate a rematch clause for an immediate rematch. So with that said, uh, Errol Spence activated the immediate rematch after the fight. He stated that he wanted to have the rematch at 154 and he wanted to do it in December. And Terrence Crawford and the post fight, he stated, why not? Uh, it's not easy for him to make 147. And uh, he wanted to move up to 154 anyway. He wanted to challenge Errol Spence's close friend, training partner and uh, stable mate. And now three-time junior middleweight world champion, former undisputed junior middleweight world champion, now a 168-pound junior uh, super middleweight title contender, Jamel Ironman Charlo, who will be stripped of his WBO title as he faces uh, four-division world champion Mexican superstar boxer, who is the undisputed super middleweight world champion, Saul Canelo Alvarez, September 30th. So Canel, uh, Terrence Crawford stated that he initially wanted to move up to challenge Jamel Charlo after Errol Spence fight. Now, Jamel Charlo's not there. He wanted to become a three-division undisputed champion. Errol Spence has already uh, activated and informed the boxing uh, world that he will be moving up. He's already now uh, considered a junior middleweight, okay, 154-pounder. And many people pointed to Errol Spence being weight-drained as a reason why he didn't look like himself, as a reason why he lost the fight, and there was a reason why he was getting knocked down. He didn't have his energy. And so now we get news that Terrence Crawford is digging in his feet and telling Errol Spence and team that if they want him to go to junior middleweight, 154 pounds, they're going to have to pay him even more money that he's looking for and is already scheduled to make, okay, that he's going to have to you know, um, sacrifice to go up to 154 and he wants to be compensated for his sacrifice because Errol Spence essentially wants this way to 154 and Terrence Crawford holds the cards. Okay. Terrence Crawford is the winner of the fight. Uh, he contractually 
uh, has the right to uh, choose what weight uh, the fight takes place and he will receive a bigger split of the purse. So now Terrence Crawford, according to these reports, is saying that if he moves up to 154, then he needs a bigger split. He needs more money to sacrifice going to 154. And if he's not going to get more money, then he wants to fight at a catch weight with a 10 pound rehydration clause. This is what is being reported. Now, I'm hard pressed to believe that Terrence Crawford is asking for a rehydration clause um, because that would be extremely strange seeing as though Terrence Crawford um, is just stating that he will move up to 154 to fight Jamel Charlo and or he will move up to 168 to fight Canelo Alvarez at 168. So why would he be asking Errol Spence for a rehydration clause and a fight at a catch weight? I can understand him saying, well, I'm the A-side. I'm moving up to 154. Errol Spence really wants me to move up to 154. Although Terrence Crawford stated it's not easy for him to make 147 pounds, he's disciplined and can make the weight. So he's saying, if I got to go up to 154 and sacrifice, then I want to be paid more. That is a business move. That's a business tactic. Uh, that's just uh, Terrence Crawford's team trying to capitalize on his uh, position of power and get the most money out of the, get the most milk out of the cow. Right. Uh, but as far as him asking for a 10 pound rehydration clause, that doesn't just doesn't make sense. Uh, and it doesn't make sense for Terrence Crawford, in my opinion, to even ask for either of these um, stipulations. The reason being is because Terrence Crawford knows that he's going to get paid handsomely for this rematch and moving forward. Not only that, Terrence Crawford also knows that he's not going to get the respect or nor he's going to get the credit if he put these stipulations on Errol Spence and forces Errol Spence to fight at a catch weight because Errol Spence is definitely not fighting at 147. But if he forces Errol Spence to fight at a catch weight about a hundred and say 50 pounds okay 151 pounds with a 10 pound rehydration clause that would mean errol spence could weigh 161 he knows he's not going to get nowhere near the credit if he beats errol spence so it just doesn't make sense for me in my opinion for somebody who's vying for the respect in the sport of boxing and for the acknowledgement of his accomplishments within the sport of boxing to force Errol Spence to do so to because people it's just to gain an advantage, an unnecessarily advantage, in my opinion. So I don't know how realistic these uh, talks are. I don't know how dug in with these stipulations Terrence Crawford is. Uh, and I don't know how committed to this rematch Errol Spence is that he would even agree to these things. Or would he just walk away? Because if Errol Spence is to walk away, what direction does Terrence Crawford go in to make the money he's going to make fighting Errol Spence? And then he's going to make the negotiations for himself against should he be victorious or should he go a different route? He's going to make the negotiations with Jamel Charlo or there of Canelo Alvarez that much more difficult because now they're going to put uh, steep stipulations on him or he's not going to get the fight. Canelo Alvarez has signed a three-fight deal with the PBC Premier Boxing Champion founder and advisor Al Heyman. And we know Jamel Charlo is a life lifer with the PBC. So he would just be making things more difficult for himself moving forward if he chooses to use his power in this position to force Errol Spence into a position where he has to walk away from the rematch. It's going to come across as completely unfair, not to mention disloyal. And the reason I say that is because Terrence Crawford has publicly stated that if it wasn't for Errol Spence obliging him and conceding to everything he wants and forcing his team to give Terrence Crawford everything he needs and wants to make this fight happen to begin with as they shook hands and 
they both agreed they didn't have to thank one another for making this fight happen and Terence Crawford publicly announced that on many occasions that if it wasn't for Errol Spence this fight would not have happened and for Terence Crawford to turn around and put these types of stipulations on Errol Spence in a rematch it just it just wouldn't be fair so I'm on record saying I don't believe that Terence Crawford will pull a rug from underneath Errol Spence's feet. Hopefully that's not the case. Let's see how this unfolds and plays out. That's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All in one word. I'm gone. Peace.